Hi, are you struggling with mathematics? Maybe you're taking a class in high school, or maybe you're taking a class in college, or maybe you're just trying to learn math on your own. In any case, it can be difficult. And there are some things that you might not be doing that can really help you get better at mathematics. In this video, I'm going to share 10 things that you probably aren't doing that will help make you better at math. Now, before I talk about these things, let me just emphasize that I think it's very rare for people to actually do all of these things. These are just 10 things that I think a lot of people don't do. Things I've seen that people don't do just from experience, from having lots of students over the years, interacting with various people. Not everyone does these things, and some people aren't even aware of them. And by watching this video, even if you don't do all of the things I say in this video, you're at least aware of them, and maybe, maybe you'll do a few of them, and if you do, I'm pretty sure it's going to help you. Okay, let's get started. The first thing that is extremely important is it's very, very important to take notes. And I really want to emphasize this for various reasons. So for one, if you think about it from the teacher's point of view, they go into a classroom and they maybe have 50 minutes or two hours or they have a specified amount of time to convey that information to you. And that's all they have. Every minute of class time is precious. And teachers know that, right? They know that what they say in that time matters because that is their one opportunity to convey the information to you. So when you realize that and you go to class and you sit down, you'll realize that it's super important to write down everything the teacher writes and says, even if you don't understand it. That's one that a lot of times people ask about. Should I write stuff down if I don't understand? Yes, absolutely. Because that way, at least you have it on a piece of paper and then you can go home and you can look at it later. Some people think it's better to sit there and listen and absorb instead of wasting time writing things down. I don't agree with that point of view. That's just my opinion. We all have opinions. I prefer to write stuff down. As a concrete example, when I was in graduate school, I used to have this teacher who would walk into class and just scribble all over the board. And most of it made sense, but a lot of it didn't. And he would just talk. And it's like he would never stop talking. It was like a conscious, conscious stream of like intelligence and mathematics. Everything he said was correct mathematically. It was just, just like a waterfall of information. And I would write everything down, go home, and go over my notes. And it would take me about two to three hours a day just to go over the notes for that class. I would rewrite them and, and try to fill in the gaps. And I didn't understand everything. I didn't. But it helped me. You know, I ended up with an A plus in that class. There was only two A pluses in the whole class. And that was one of the highlights of, <laughs> of, of my educational career, right, was, was an A plus in that class. And I really think that it was because I... I worshipped the guy's notes. I mean, he passed away several years ago, but in any case, it's worth it, right? It's always worth taking notes. So if you're not taking notes now, I recommend that you start doing it. I think it's going to make a really, really big difference in your performance. So start taking notes. The second thing, which I think is incredibly important, is to do the homework and finish it early. This is one that I have found uh, over the years that most people don't do. Personally, I always finish the homework at least like two days before the test. I was never one of those people that had it done like a week early. I mean, in some occasions I was able to do that. I always strived to be that guy who was done a week early, but I always had a really hard time with that. So at the very least, I think you want to do all of the homework and get it done a few days before the test. Most people, most people wait until two or three days before the test and then start the homework. That's just how it is. And that's normal. We're human beings. It's like almost like we're wired to procrastinate. <laughs> just, I don't know what it is. I think it's just a very human thing to wait 
until a few days before the test and then start doing the homework. It's not a good idea. Maybe you're doing it and maybe you're getting good grades, but at some point it does catch up with you, right? The classes do get harder. Once you get into the harder proof-based classes, it doesn't really work that way. You can't just sit down and do all the homework in two days. It's not common for people to do that. When I was in grad school, no one did that, right? I mean, it gets so hard at some point that you just have to take the time to finish it beforehand. Now, the reason I emphasize doing it before, the, you know, a couple days before the test is you want to have time to go back and look over the homework again. You want to have time to study for the test. You want to have time to take a day off before the test. You just need some time before the test to do whatever it is you want to do, whether it be studying for the test, reviewing the homework, or taking a mental break before you go in there and take a test. So it's really, really important to try to finish early. The third thing I want to emphasize that you might not be doing, and I've encountered people who don't do this, is to actually study for the test. I've had students in the past who do all of the homework, it looks like they're going to do well, they take the test, and they don't do well. And they usually come to me and they say, hey, I don't know what's going on, I did all the homework, everything made sense in class, but I took the test and I guess I just got nervous and I didn't do good. What's going on? I usually ask them, did they study for the test? Usually the answer is no. If the answer is yes, I ask them how they studied, but most of the time these people didn't really spend a lot of time preparing for the test. So it's really important to really hyper-focus your time on test preparation. And that might seem kind of bad if you think about it, right? I mean, you go to school for maybe three or four weeks and then you have a test. And your test is, let's just say, 50 minutes. So all of the knowledge that you've learned throughout three weeks comes down to those 50 minutes of your life, which is timed and proctored and there's stress. Maybe it's not the best way to do things, but really what we think doesn't matter. It's just how society is. It's just the way of the world. So all we can do is conform and prepare for those tests and overcome them and do well. And one way to do that is to spend a considerable amount of time preparing for the test. By finishing the homework early, you give yourself a couple days to study for the test, and if possible, take a break before the test. That's something that um, really, really helps. No one ever talks about that, but it works. If you're actually ready enough to where you can take a break, so you study for the test, and then you take a day off, then take the test, that that's that's the sweet spot. It's really hard to get there though. You have to be one of those people that finishes a week early. The fourth thing that I think a lot of people don't do, and this is something that I didn't do, and I do have regrets about it, and I should have done it, it's to form study groups or go to study groups. My argument was, oh, I already kind of have everything figured out, so why do I need to go study with a bunch of people? I can sit here with my books in my room and do math on my own and eat pizza and I'm perfectly happy. So I don't really need other people. Wrong. That is not the right attitude to have. College is a great experience and so is high school if you make it one. You really want to get together with people who study and learn from them. There's something you get from talking about mathematics. If you ever wonder why teachers know so much, well, they did go to school, but they're also teaching, so they're explaining mathematics. So if you feel like you already know it all and you go to a study group and you end up tutoring everyone in that study group, that's awesome. You're doing two things there. One, you're helping other people, which is really good. These are your classmates. These are your friends. These might even become lifelong friends. Two, you're making yourself better because you're explaining it. So you're getting better at math by helping other people. I mean, how great is that? That's what teaching is all about, right? You help other people, and at the same time, you get better at math. So if you go to a study group and you feel like you're above everyone mathematically, it's okay, you're still gonna learn. On the other hand, if you go to a study group and you're struggling, it's good, you can learn from people. You'll learn how people think. Different people think about mathematics in different ways. It's really interesting. It gets really interesting when you start meeting really smart people who are really good at math and you see how they think about problems and how they think about proofs. And if you watch them work out the proofs, it's really kind of mysterious because you see another human being go through what you're going through and you can learn from that. And you can try to get some tips from that. You can try to copy what they do 
and mimic some of their strategies and that will reflect on your performance as well. Study groups all the way. The fifth thing which I think is extremely important to do and this is something that I usually didn't do is talk to your professors. I maybe did this a handful of times in my college career and it was worth it. Even when I went to their office and I didn't understand, it's still worth it. You still get something out of it and you never know when you're going to need a letter of recommendation or a reference and a lot of times for academic stuff, you do need letters of recommendation. It's much easier if you've had some interaction with your professors before you ask them for a letter because that way they have something to write about. And if you've had lots of interaction and they know you're trying, they know you care about math, they can write about that in your letter and so it's reflected. I think it's definitely worth it to go see them when you have questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. The sixth thing is something you're probably not doing and this is something that I always did and I think it's one of the reasons I was able to do okay and get good grades for the most part. It's redo the homework. That's right. <laughs> so we're not just talking about doing the homework. I would actually go back and redo all of the homework. When I was taking like the calculus classes, like calculus one, two, and three, I would do all the homework. I would finish maybe two or three days before the test. Then I would go back and just redo all of it. I'd, and I would do it as fast as I could. I would practice and work on speed and, and just really envelop myself in homework problems. I would just go through and try to do like 20 problems and then do another 20 and then do another 20. I was like a machine. Um, I really just hyper-focused on redoing problems and studying uh, to prepare for the test. So redoing homework I think is something that a lot of people don't do. And I think the reason they don't do it is because they usually don't allow themselves to. You're not able to redo the homework unless you finish everything early and give yourself time to do it. But that's how you know you're ready for a test, when you can do every single homework problem without looking at your book or your notes or watching a video. If you can do that, you're in pretty good shape and you're probably going to do really, really well. The seventh thing which you're probably not doing, which I think will really help your math, is to actually start reading math books. This helps tremendously. I think I picked up one of my first math books when I was taking a calculus class. I remember sitting at a dentist office, waiting for the dentist, reading a book on complex variables. I didn't know anything about proof writing or anything, and here I am with a little book on complex variables trying to understand it. I didn't understand everything I read, but that's okay. It gave me something to do while I was waiting at the dentist. And it was a small book. It's a Dover book. And I mean, it's a pretty good book. And I remember that. And I felt like I got something from that. And I think you will too. So my advice is just go online and buy a bunch of books and start reading them. I also recommend if you have a hard time getting yourself to do things, getting a little timer like this one, you just set the time and then read for 30 minutes and then when the time's up, you've just used 30 minutes of your life. Then you can go back and reflect on that. What did you just do for 30 minutes? You spent 30 minutes reading a math book. You probably learned a lot in those 30 minutes. I really think it's worth it. I think it's worth reading books. You get something from books that you don't get from lectures, that you don't get from just doing homework problems, and that you don't get from watching videos. It's a different experience when you read a math book. Something about reading really makes it stick. I think it's worth it, and it's worth giving it a shot if you haven't done it yet. The eighth thing, which you might not be doing, but I'm going to guess that you're probably doing this one, is watching math videos. There are so many videos on math on the internet now, you can pretty much find a video for anything. If you're taking Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3, linear algebra, abstract algebra, anything, you can find videos online. So if you're ever stuck on your homework, just search for videos. You'll probably find something that explains it. Personally, I'm a bigger fan of books, but videos are awesome, and there's tons of them out there, so start using them if you're not. The ninth thing is something really important. This is something you can do when you just feel like you can't study anymore, when you're feeling burnt out, when you're just lacking motivation. It's to take a break, sit back, go for a walk, and remind yourself 
why you're doing this. Why are you taking this class? Why are you here? What is the whole point of this? Are you going to college for a purpose? Really reflect on what you're doing and take some time to think about it. This is not a process that you can usually work out in your mind in a few minutes. It takes time. You might need to sleep on it. If you're tired, get some rest. You won't believe <laughs> the difference that a good night's sleep can make on your thought processes. It really is key. So get some rest, take a break. Tomorrow's a new day and try to evaluate why you're taking the class, why it's important for you to succeed. Maybe you're taking this class because you have no choice. It is a required class for a degree you're trying to get because you want a better life, because you want to get a better job. That's fine. That's a good reason to do well in the class, right? So whatever the reason is, try to find it. Find the reason that you're taking the class and you'll be able to rationalize in your mind why it's important for you to succeed. And that alone is going to give you a lot of motivation. Super key. The tenth thing I think is the most important. And I don't think that you can get to this one until you really, really put some hard work into it. What I mean by that is I only think you see this after you really struggle. I feel like the struggle of math helps you realize this. It's part of it. It's to realize that math is deep and beautiful. And you only get that through your struggles. You know, it's it's those those long hours studying for tests, you know, test after test, you know, those those highs and lows. Sometimes you'll fail a test, sometimes you'll do really well. And the deeper you go in math, if you just stop and think about it, it really is all interconnected and really beautiful. There is a certain satisfaction you get when you're able to write a proof and, and do it on your own. It's a great moment. Or what, even just calculus. You're doing an integral and you finally figure it out and you end up with a beautiful solution to your integration problem. I mean, there's an appreciation to that. Unfortunately, you can't really appreciate it until you succeed, until you go through those hardships. So it's kind of a weird thing. You get to realize how beautiful math is, but only through a lot of hard work. Ah, I guess all good things take work, maybe. I don't know. Who said that? I guess I just did. But it is beautiful. And by realizing that, I really think it helps motivate you. You know, it's a beautiful subject. It's deep. It's rich. And remember, no one in the world knows all the math in the world. Even the best mathematicians in the world, they don't know it all. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you follow any of these things, I think they will help you. If you have any advice for anyone watching this video, please leave a comment. It's good to help other people. Good luck to you.